What's up guys, I'm Ole England and I've been using the plugin Amplitube on and off a bunch of times throughout the years but never actually made a video for it. Well, the day has come. I've decided to make a video of Amplitube 4. One of the main reasons why I've used Amplitube in the past is that they have an official Mesa Boogie amplifier pack. And as you know, I'm a big fan of Mesa Boogie amps in general. And when I found out that there were legit plug-in versions of the dual rectifier, it was an instant purchase. And the Mesa Boogie pack for Amplitude not only contains the dual rectifier, it also has the triple rectifier, the Mark III and IV, and the Transatlantic TA-30, together with a wide array of Mesa Boogie cabinets to choose from. And in this video, I'm going to try them all out and tweak around for a bit. For this test, I'm using an iRig Pro Duo interface into my computer, but this interface also works with iPad and iPhone. And uh, I have the iPad version loaded up here, looks like this. And I'm also trying out the iRig Blueboard pedal board so I can switch between my sound. This works with Bluetooth, so there's no cables. Cool, huh? Okay, so now we loaded up the plugin into Logic Pro X, and this is what it looks like. It's very straightforward. You have the signal path up here, you have the editing part here, the input section here, noise gate setting here, and the output section here. So let's check out the signal path real quick. Starting with the tuner, we go over to the stomp A, and this is the stomp box section where you would add stomp boxes in front of the amplifier. So if you want to use an overdrive, for instance, this is where you would do that. After that, we have the amp section, and this is where you pick your amplifier. And as you can see, Amplitube has teamed up with a bunch of brands already with a lot of different packs that are locked that you can buy in the custom shop. But I'm using the Mesa Boogie pack right now. And uh, as you can see also, there's an amp A and an amp B and the cab A and the cab B. What that means is that you can use a dual amp and a dual cab setup, uh, but I'm just going for the single path setup in this video. After the amp block, you have the insert A block, and that's basically the effects loop of the amplifier. So I would put delay and modulation effect in this part. And after the amp block and the insert block, we have the cabinet block. And it's very straightforward. You basically pick your cabinet, microphone, speaker, etc. And after that, we have the rack block, and that is where you would do all the post-processing. So for say you have a good setup going, you would like to EQ that, your whole tone. Rack A block is where you would do all that post-processing. So let's go back to the amp block. I have a dual rectifier loaded here, and uh, it's the free channel variation, which has the channel one, channel two, and channel three. Channel one is the clean. And it has two different modes. It has clean and pushed. Pushed sounds like this. Channel two orange. Channel three red. Both channel 3 red and channel 2 orange have three different modes to pick from. Uh, I'm playing in modern right now, which is really good for a heavy chunky rhythm. Then we have the raw mode, which is basically more like a crunchy or pushed mode. And then we have the vintage. And the vintage mode would be the mode I would use if I would set up a rectifier with a lead tone. And I would use modern for my rhythm tone. Okay, so let's switch to the Mesa Boogie triple rectifier. And the difference between the dual and the triple rectifier is basically the dual rectifier is a 100 watt output and the triple rectifier is a 150 watt output. So the triple rectifier should have more headroom than the dual rectifier. <laughs> So 
So you have all the front knobs of the amplifier here, but you also have a back section where you can basically make all the switches and choices like on the real amp. So you have the power section where you can choose between a spongy or a bold type of tone. That's bold. That's spongy. And then you can pick the rectifier between the vacuum tubes or the silicon diodes. And last but not least, you can change the power tubes used in the power amp section. These are the 606s. And then we have the L34s. And a nice little touch here is that when you play, the power amp tube kind of lits up a bit. That's a nice little effect. So, Let's go back to the front. And something I like to do with rectifiers is to push the input of the amplifier using an overdrive. So I'm gonna add a stomp box overdrive. Let's pick the overscreen. Oh, let's turn on the drive a little bit, push the level. And as you can hear now, there's a bunch of noise going on because we're adding more distortion. So now would be a good time to activate the noise gate like that. And this overdrive made the amplifier totally more chunky. So without the overdrive, with the overdrive, okay. Let's switch the amplifier again. Let's pick the Mark III. I really like how the plugin reacts to me adjusting the volume knob on my guitar. I can go from very... very clean sound... to the more pushed sound. Very dynamic. I really like that. Okay, so let's do a rhythm sound, a metal rhythm sound for this one. Okay, let's check the back. Oh, you have the spring reverb. You also had the presence here. You can also choose between Simul Class and Class A. Okay, let's try out the next amplifier, the Mark IV. really has that glassy type of sound. So that's gnarly. Let's check out the back real quick. Lead voicing, mid game. Harmonics. Then we have the power amp section, similar class or class A. Triode or pentode? We have pentode now. Awesome. Okay, let's check out the last amp, the Mesa Boogie Transatlantic TA30. I have not tried this amplifier in real life, but I guess it's type of a more crunchy amp. 
maybe more British sounding, correct me if I'm wrong. It's a tweed setting. Let's switch back to the Mark IV and check out the cabinet section. So with the Mesa Boogie Pack, you have five different cabinets to choose from. Let's check it out. We have the 1x12 Mark III. We have the 1x12 Mark IV. The 2x12 Rectify Horizontal. I have one of those. Super awesome cabinet. The 4x12 Recto Traditional. And then we have the 2x12 Transatlantic. I'm going with the 4x12 for this video because it's the most full sounding. And after the cabinet section, we have the speaker section. And here you can basically switch out every speaker in the cabinet. And there's just so many speakers to choose from. I mean, the possibilities are just endless. So standard is, of course, the Vintage 30. Let's try and switch that out to something else. Let's see. Very cool. Then we have the microphone placement section. First, you pick what type of microphone you want. I have two microphones. The first one is the Dynamic 57, basically a Shure SM57. And the other one is a Condenser 87. I guess that's a Neumann 87. And here you can switch around the placement of the microphone and how it reacts to the speaker. So check it out. <laughs> You can also adjust the distance to the speaker. Very cool. Next part is the room part, and that's basically picking a room where the cabinet is in. So just to hear it more clearly, I'm going to raise the level of the room. This is the big live room. Then we have the venue. Studio A. Booth. Oh, definitely sounds like a booth. That's cool. Last but the garret. So, I mean, there's so much you can do in the cabinet section. It's just awesome. Okay, so say I want to make a lead sound and add a couple of effects. Let's go back to the amp section. I'm going to add a stomp box again, but with a little bit more drive, just to add more distortion. Okay, let's turn on the room real quick. Okay, so let's add a delay in the effects loop. That is the insert A block. Digital delay. Delay time. Filter. Okay, a little longer delay time, I think. Okay, that's very cool. Let's add a modulation effect too. 
let's add a chorus. <laughs> Awesome. So if I would do something else now, if I want to feel like, okay, I need to compress everything, I would do it in the rack A section to add a bit of compression to the whole tone, all the delays and everything. So let's put a tube compressor on there. So that's basically how you make a preset in Amplitude 4. It's very simple and I mean it's really real sounding in my opinion. The Mesa Boogie Pack for Amplitude 4 is probably the closest you will ever get to the real deal in a plugin form. The amps react like they should and they definitely sound like they should. And even though I'm a big fan of sitting turning knobs on a real amplifier, using these amp simps is a very pleasant experience. For more information about Amplitude 4 and the Mesa Boogie Pack, check out ikmultimedia.com. Also be sure to check links in the descriptions for the presets made for this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please put a like, subscribe to my channel and see you next time.